Hello, this is Brina Palencia, voice of CL Phantom Hive. You're listening to Mark Who 42. Welcome to Mark Who 42's universe here on Subspace Radio. Yeah, we're on Subspace Radio now, folks. Hi, everyone. We're a new station. We used to be an old station. Now we're Subspace Radio. We're also on the GeekCast Radio Network uh, and all the other interweb thingies around the uh, web. And uh, kind of stupid. Interweb thingies around the web. Using web twice. Kind of redundant. But our show isn't redundant. This is a Valentine's Day show. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. And with us today on our show is... So it's Valentine's Day and you didn't get me anything? Okay, I see how it is. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, I see how it is. No, okay. no okay. I gave all right. you a recording a few minutes ago. That was your hot, That was your Valentine's present. Really? Yeah. Really? Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I see. Okay. All right. Okay. Wow. You know, other people get like, you know, flowers or you know hey i'm a i'm a, I'm like a radio show host i get uh-huh, recordings yeah. uh-huh. okay That's yeah all do. right all right fine fine but yeah this is a this is eduardo and fryer and fortunately i have a wife that i can be valentine's day That's with the and other you can reason. be valentine's That's the day other reason why you didn't get a present Oh, oh, okay. So you just let my wife do all the work. Oh, okay. Oh, I yeah, see how it is. Pretty much. Pretty oh, okay. Much. Oh, 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 and he admits it. He That's admits it. Okay. He admits it. Trish, I'm sorry about that, but it is all on you. You're, you're. Very oh, good. oh, oh, letting the letting the woman do all the work. Wow, very progressive of you, Mark. Okay. Let the woman do all. Please let the woman do please all the work. Don't write in, but if you're going to write in, marker forty two s dot universe at gmail dot com. If you really want to complain, or if you like the show, go ahead. We also have on the show, Vicky Jacobowski. Happy Valentine's Day, Vicky. Well, thank you. And the person and, I gave and I'm going to talk those... to Patricia Eduardo. Yeah. You better behave. I like her. Yeah. Oh, and Vicky, the person I gave you want was... me to behave. The person I gave oh. you was the top secret uh, project. That's yes, Valentine's Day I'm project. on it. Yeah, cool. Yes, sir. Yes, we have a top secret project coming on. And you guys out there in Radio Land and Podcast Land have no clue what we're talking about. And that's a good thing. Okay, so like I said, it's Valentine's Day. And uh, yeah, uh, Valentine's Day. It's, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know what to say about Valentine's Day except love. Love is the answer. Love is what, what does uh, Ringo Starr say? Peace and love. Peace and love. Okay. I'm not going <laughs> to try it. I, I'm I know. Not even try it. I, yeah. I know Vash the Stampede from Trigon says, Love and peace. Love and peace. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so today on Valentine's Day, yeah, it is Valentine's Day. If you're listening to us uh, live, this is actually Valentine's Day today. And all of us are doing a show and not treating our uh our our partners with uh love peace and love um but anyway (laughs) yeah dude what what yeah no that might be you but you know hey i you know i I always treat my wife with peace and love well that's good that's good but then why are you doing the show on valentine's evening just well just asking okay so today's show, we're going to do a follow-up of a show we did two years ago on Valentine's Week. We're going to do a show on pop culture romances, on couples, on other rom- you know romances in pop culture. It's not just science fiction, folks. It's pop culture. Anything, everything out there. Uh, are you guys ready for this? Go for it. I'm always ready, it. dude. All right. We're going to start with Ed. Ed, who is your number one pop culture romance? Well, actually, um, prepping for this show, I wasn't thinking about like thinking about it in those terms. Okay, I was just trying to think about stuff like you know more recent stuff since two years ago. Yeah, and one of the things that one of the things that I'm really enjoying mm-hmm. is I love the show Superman and Lois. Yeah, 
Yeah, I love it. One of the and one of the things. Well, no, but see, one of the things I love about it is it's you know picking up picking up from where Superman's previous appearances in the Arrowverse left off. Mm-hmm. In the sense that he and Lois are already together. Right. She already knows he's Superman. They've already built a life for themselves. Mm-hmm. So it's great that it's like, okay, let's focus on the two of them as a couple, on the two of them, you know, navigating being parents, on, you know, having to deal with the fact that, you know, Lois having to deal with the fact that she has, you know, uh, the world's greatest superhero as a husband, you know, Clark trying to balance being said world's greatest superhero and a dad and a husband. It's kind of cool that we get that, you know, because yeah. I, what can I say? I'm just, I'm somebody that I really, I don't know. I've, I've lost my taste for, um, for the whole thing with like, oh, you know, let's, let's have the whole secret identity thing and let's, you know, uh, Dean Kane and Terry Hatcher. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. The whole, you, you know, the whole, will they, you know, the whole, uh, well, n- uh, I'd rather not uh okay uh, I, Dean Kane, <laughs> but um you know I you know for me it's the fact that it's let's get away from the whole thing of like oh the whole you know cliche of I can't tell them my secret identity and you know this this whole thing of oh where were you because we just saw Superman well I'm sorry Lois but I had to go to the bathroom you know what happened yeah I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen in the comic book uh, well maybe, you, but you but I don't you get think what, that's an, I don't think that's actually what he says well but you get what I'm saying you get yes, what I'm I, saying I get what you're saying. like we I don't get have that and I actually don't have agree. that. I, I, it, I yeah. like the Mary Lois and Clark. I always have oh, yeah. reading the comic books from yeah. 80, uh, 86 and onward. Um, I like the fact that he revealed his identity to Lois and he died and then they got married when he came back. I, yeah. I enjoyed that storyline. The, the dying, not so much, though, yeah. was a good storyline. Well, and then the other thing is, is that, um, you know, anybody who anybody who was a, uh, you know, anybody who was a, a DC a DC person mm-hmm. like before, you know, before the nineties, when uh, Clark revealed his identity, Lois and and Clark actually did get married and she did find out who he was before that. Earth uh, two. Earth two. Back, yeah, exactly. Pre, pre-crisis. Yeah. Earth two Superman revealed his identity to Lois and, you know, they got married. So yeah. there is a precedent for it. This isn't, you know, this isn't totally out of the blue. Again, an infinite crisis. Well, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, because it's the, uh, you know, of course that had a little bit more of a tragic uh, yeah. ending. Yeah. So you know, that's yeah. Might might not want to might not want to mention that 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 much. You know, might, <laughs> might really not want to bring that part up. Maybe not. Maybe <laughs> yeah, not. Maybe not. Maybe not. But no, I mean, Superman and Lois, definitely. V- Vicky, what do you feel about Superman and Lois? Not just the TV show, but in general. Together. I like the idea, probably because I'm an old married woman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been married 30 years. It just, you know, I like the idea of the superheroes having some semblance of normal lives because that seems to be the hardest thing about being a superhero how do you have any semblance of what a normal life is like and there's been many characters throughout the decades where you know they they pined for some semblance of normalcy and i mean no offense we strung along poor lois lane for decades (laughs) yeah Yeah. personally i would have said bye yeah but, you know, I, I like the more modern take on it. I was not a big fan of Terry Hatcher's Lois Lane. I'm not a big fan of Terry Hatcher. Um, it, it just, I, I don't know. I don't like it when Lois Lane is whiny. I liked it when she was strong. You, you know, I liked it when she was a person, you know, a fleshed out character. And I feel like yeah. this new series has really done it. And what would it be like? if Superman had a family and all of those things that come with being a spouse and a father mm-hmm. and being a superhero, it's kind of fun and it's kind of, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I could see that. So happening, I mean, you know, punishing your kids, um, getting in an argument with your wife, you know, making up all the things you do in mm-hmm. your life. I kind of like that. It it it's it of course it's still contrived, but but it's kind of fun to watch because you can actually identify with Superman. Yep. I mean, and, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, and actually yeah. and, and see the other thing, the other thing, I mean, picking up on, on what you're saying, Vicky, 
is you look at, you know, you also look at like, there's the, you know, there's the things about being a parent, like, you know, the father teaching his kid to drive or, you know, Mm -hmm. playing catch with his son, you know, things like that. Now, of course, we have that little variation where it's like, okay, son, I'm going to teach you how to deal with having super hearing. Okay, son, I'm going to teach you how to fly, you know? that sort of thing it's like oh okay we're gonna have that now it's a whole new level of exactly (laughs) exactly it's a whole new level where it's like okay now we're gonna be like yeah we can still identify it with it exactly because whether you're teaching him how to fly or use his x-ray vision you know it's the same as teaching him to ride a bike or drive a car or how to deal with your first girlfriend or whatever oh, right. it may yeah, be. Exactly. Which, by the way, is, is he still, is, is uh, Clark's son still uh, dating, uh, I forgot her name, uh, from the Lana's first season? Daughter? Yeah, Lana's, be, Lana's daughter? Yeah, Lana's daughter, because I haven't seen this season. Um, yeah, I haven't started well, it yet. Yeah, I, I, think, that I, I, I do believe intrigue. that they're still, <laughs> I think that they're still together. There's been a couple of wrinkles, but uh-huh. they're well, still together. Always. Yeah, they're, they're still, they're still kind of together. Okay. Of course, we did have, uh, like, I think it was the first or second episode. Mm-hmm. We did have that other, you know, a- another another uh, milestone of being a parent, a parent and husband, having to give one of your kids the talk. The talk. <laughs> or at least, you know, or at least, do we give the, you know, how do we give, how do we give them the talk? Valentine's we, Day, we're talking about the talk. That's the always, talk. that's always important. That's such a fun yeah. discussion as a parent, oh, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Whether your yeah, child's yeah, a superhero yeah, or not. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, All right. Jesus. Oh man. Oh, the, oh man, oh man. Man of Shevitz. Okay. Uh, let's no, move on. That not not Man oh no. Man of Shevitz? No? No. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> no, that's what no, no, no. That's that's what no, okay. It's what we say here in Miami. <laughs> Okie dokie then. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah. Um Vicky, who who do you have what what uh pop culture romance would you like to talk about? Well, my first thought. I, I'm going to realize that I was not part of your universe a couple of years ago. Yes. Um, there could be the anything. The thing that then. came to my mind was Han and Leia. But I'm pretty uh, sure yeah. that that uh, had to be something you discussed last time. Did, no, actually, we did. Really? Did we not? We did I, not. I, well, did we not? We did, you, what I don't is think wrong we did, with you people? I don't think we I did. And know. even if we haven't, I want a new perspective. Okay. Even if we have. Well, I, I have loved the the Han and Leia romance because she's always been a very strong woman. Mm. Even when she's vulnerable, she's still a strong person. You look at her in, in the first three movies, technically mm. four, five, and six, and you see how strong she is. She right. is able to command the, the troops. She's able to you know, get people to safety and still have a moment of vulnerability when she couldn't decide if she actually cared about him or not. And by the time you get to the end of Empire Strikes Back, right. she is still a strong person. I mean, who was comforting who? Was Chewie comforting Leia or was Leia comforting Ju- Chewie? As as Han gets frozen, I mean, it just... And then she immediately goes into action. She saves Luke Skywalker and they plan their next thing, which of course turns out to be to save Han Solo. Right. It just... To me, I love that because you have these two very strong characters who very obviously care deeply for each other. And, you know, when when we start in episode seven and we find out that they're kind of broken up, it's like, no. (laughs) But then again, you know, decades have passed. Issues have happened. Their son went to the dark side. A lot of people would break up over that. And it's so obvious that they still care for each other when they first see each other again. Yeah. And I love that romance where there's um, genuine feeling and it's not all about the um, physical attraction. There's so much more going on there. And then I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I just love it when there's a strong woman who can still be vulnerable and still have a good romantic situation. Because I'm a loudmouth schmuck and I like to see other loudmouth schmucks get it. So, yeah. you know. All right. <laughs> Can we say schmuck on the air? I'm not quite sure. I'm know. sorry. That's <laughs> okay. We're, no, you can say it. I'm Jewish. <laughs> you can totally say the word schmuck. <laughs> totally all right. I don't, I'm not offended. Uh, 
Ed, what do you, what, what's your take on what uh, Vicky said? You know what? I, yeah, I have to, I, I gotta, well, first of all, I just, I do have to wonder, um, did Leia keep the metal bikini? No. <laughs> does she, uh, does well, she pull it that, higher? What? Set it off into the sunset. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yowch. Yowza. Hey, I, I listened to Carrie Fit. She has bruising in bad places from wearing that stupid thing. Oof. And I'm just going to tell you, as a fangirl, that was the worst costume in the world. And and George Lucas, I love you, but between that and there's no underwear in space, give me a break. No underwear <laughs> in space. That's horrible. oh, you didn't you didn't know that? Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. When, there's a lot of chafing going on then. <laughs> yes well um carrie fisher told him listen i need to at least wear a bra this is for the first movie when they're shooting the first yeah. one he yeah. turns her and he goes there's no underwear in space oh geez. and she's like i need an effing bra <laughs> yeah. you mean it's an earth it's an earth invention underwear apparently so apparently yeah. but but then he did get better and later apologized to her but yeah it was part of her stand-up yeah. routine for for years before she passed it was one of the funniest things she wrote about it in one of her autobiographies mm -hmm. and it's just like no there is underwear in space and if a woman wants to wear a bra or not wear a bra you're gonna let her yeah <laughs> well we know female perspective <laughs> well we, we do know we do know there has there has to be um there has to at least be like some form of undergarments because luke was wearing like the little diaper, whatever, when he was in the Bakta tank. Yeah, that's a diaper. God bless George. Yeah, that's Lucas, a diaper. But, that's you know, different. he was he 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 was a boy, and <laughs> and sometimes y'all don't get it, and um, yeah, he just he thought it ruined the lines of the costume. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was a big that, thing in the seventies about panty lines. They even created a a a pair of pantyhose that had built in underwear so you didn't have to wear underwear why I'm not do i kidding. remember that why because you were I around remember? in the 70s yeah but did I... you have a mother she probably wore oh, them oh yes okay i i know it was just, it was the, the the obsession with panty lines in the 70s was ridiculous so i do kind of blame that and that's mm. where george lucas gets his misunderstanding of female <laughs> undergarments but um, yeah, no, she complained about how difficult and painful and how many wardrobe malfunctions she had with that stupid metal bra. Are there, are there, is there film? <laughs> no, there is oh, not. What? But she oh, talks gee. about it. Mark. At no, I'm just wondering. See, I just, okay. I just did a, I just did a small joke about, you know, about, <laughs> you know, whether or not she kept the outfit, you know, whether or not Han was like, Hey, can we keep this? Uh, you know, and then you have to sit there and go, oh, is there film about uh, oh, come Terry on, Fisher's wardrobe too, malfunction? Yeah, come on, Ed. You were totally thinking <laughs> I was too. not. No, I was not. I was not. Oh, you're, are, you're a red blood American. You were a male. You <laughs> were thinking about it. Ed. Don't deny it. Yeah, I was There's, also raised to be a gentleman. Are, are you in Egypt? The, the he, was, he, was, he was raised to not. Oh, oh, that was bad. I know. Oh, that was a dad joke all the way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Next topic. No, no. I like talking about Luke and I mean. Oh, now. Okay. Oh, so, oh. no. Luke and Leia. Now, what? Did, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh now we're getting in there. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Come on, you, you, you misunderstand me, Ed. You misunderstand me, Ed. You misunderstand me. No, um, I understand they, you perfectly. No, they oh. seemed they they seemed to have a romance until they found out. And then it stopped. And I'm just wondering, yes. was that, I mean, how ew was that? When you were watching Star Wars, I, I'm, Empire Strikes Back, did you, and Return of the Jedi, did you go ew, or did you just accept it and move on? I actually accepted it and moved on because they didn't know. Right. And it's interesting because when you first see them, she is far more mature, had been raised by the senator and his family, and she's far more mature, and he's very young, being a young water farmer. And then right. as the shows progress, it's very clear that they're actually the same age. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in the beginning, you think it's going to be Luke and Leia. I mean, yeah. my God, she's, such, she's an amazing woman who wouldn't fall in love with her. But, you know, you just... They didn't know, so you can't right. really blame them. No, 
And if there was only one movie, if Star Wars was its own movie and right. they never made a sequel, Luke and Leia were getting we're going to have the romance that was well, except story. that lucas always intended they were always brothers well, yeah yeah but, so but, if you read but, his you notes, didn't but you did not learn that in a new hope I, or star wars or whatever yeah so you it's learned very, it in so ed, uh, return of the jedi yeah so ed it is not ridiculous to bring that up no it's still ridiculous but obi-wan says put aside your feelings yeah they, <laughs> and that's exactly what i did <laughs> Well, look. Okay, I listen to Alec Guinness. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you listen. You listen to Alec Guinness. <laughs> listen, listen, Victoria. Search your feelings. <laughs> okay. Put aside your anger. I'm not searching anything. Thank you, though. Put aside your anger. <laughs> I think a little intrigue, you know, because it had a little bit of a Western theme to it. It had a little bit of a soap opera thing to it i mean come on who's his father darth vader i mean it's, it's just like a telenovela i mean you know, girlfriend sister father <sighs> evil villain you who know, the hell you, is everybody? you know uh vicky now that you said telenovela i'm just picturing yeah star wars is a spanish telenovela <laughs> you, you can do it can't you it really luke. it really feels does it that. work does it work yes. luke, luke yo soy to padre. Oh. Oh. No, 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 no and then you put that you know you know that the dramatic music that the novelas have yeah see si, your soy to padre no i'm just gonna Ilea. listen keep going eh? I love Ilea. <laughs> Ilea es tu hermana <laughs> no. well but you can even do that with with anakin and padme <laughs> and then it really becomes a telenovela yeah. when you get Ray and Ben Solo. Uh, I wow. I, I, I yeah. To, yeah. It does. Yeah. I and, watched this. And mm-hmm. I totally, you know, I, I loved it. I had some people who were like, no, she can't love Ben. He's such a creeper. I'm like, yeah, well, sometimes we make bad choices as women, okay? But for yeah. me, I got it. You have two damaged people who gravitated towards each other. Yeah. They didn't know that they were sharing a a, essentially a damaged gene. You know, they they were they were just they were connected in so many ways when you think about it. Mm -hmm. And well, and did not upset me. And And they both made the ultimate sacrifice for each other. It's better than Romeo and Juliet. And and actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'll I'll give you one. I'll give you one even better because I mean, think about it this way. So we had those who were shipping. Kylo Ren slash Ben Solo and Ray, mm-hmm. and then you had those that were shipping Ray and um, Finn, and then those that were shipping Finn and Poe. Mm-hmm. So it's yes. like, yeah, you just have all over the. You got like enough fuel for like a lot of you know hookups and and stuff. Yes, yeah. and there's a lot of couples that you don't realize or even near misses in in this universe and and some of that i think that they they kind of failed to explore things better but i get it you know you had so many plots and subplots in each of these mm-hmm. nine movies that we've had so far today and, that i can i can forgive the fact that not everyone got fleshed out but i do wish that some things whether yeah. you're talking an individual character or couples it's like okay well now i want to know what happened to them and since all the books from the 80s and 90s are no longer canon, I need something new. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? And one thing, I know that after um, Rise of Skywalker came out, that they revealed that the Emperor, you, supplemental material shows that the Emperor was a clone and that apparently he also used cloning to get like his his kid, mm-hmm. which it's like, okay, thank you for putting that out because I don't. That felt better need yeah i don't need what the image woman? i don't <laughs> need the image of of you know i mean no offense Ian McDermott. you're you know you put in a great performance but i don't but, need the image of the emperor like, you know we no, know no speaking no, of not just me- no speaking of not needing the image uh, or not because i'm not sure how this segue was gonna work we're gonna take a break here. <laughs> See, it doesn't actually work. We're gonna take a break here from Marku 42's universe. You're listening to us on Subspace Radio and the Geek Cast Radio Network, Marku42.com, and all, all around the interweb thingy. We'll be right back. 
we'll be back with more of Mark Who 42's universe here on Odyssey Radio. Ah, welcome to my throne room, Future Tales. The Beast Unleashed podcast is over, not gone. You can hear more of this great podcast discussing all the episodes of Beast Wars and Beast Machines on GeekCastRadio.com. We include voice actor and writer interviews with stellar hosting by Steve, Mike, and Michael. Head on over to iTunes or the net, or else I will send you my vehicles to extract your spark and destroy you. <laughs> yes. You are listening to Mark Who 42's Universe on Odyssey Radio. Welcome back to more of Mark Who 42's Universe here on Subspace Radio. Yes, the all-new Subspace Radio and, of course, GeekCast Radio Network, MarkWho42.com, and all around the interweb thingy and all those podcast platforms out there. I'm your host, Mark Baumgarten, and with me today are Eduardo M. Fryer and Vicky Jakubowski, and we're celebrating Valentine's Day because you know what? If you listen to us on this live per- performance, performance live show, it's Valentine's Day, folks. Yay! Uh, if you're listening to a repeat, well, I hope you got your uh, your partner flowers. If you missed, if you're listening on a repeat, flowers, chocolates, promises you don't intend to keep. Okay, I'm I'm gonna Please disavow just don't the take third them one. to dinner. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, I used to run a restaurant, and I'm gonna tell you, I hated Valentine's Day. Oh yeah, because we had five million couples, and there was always at least a dozen guys the day of Valentine's Day calling and say, I promised my wife that I got reservations weeks ago. Can you just squeeze me in at seven o'clock? No, I can squeeze you in at 4 p.m. or 10 p.m. Which would you like? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then they would offer you money and swear at you and call you horrible names. And mm-hmm. so, no, go the day before, go the day after, go on a weekday, surprise your significant other and take them out to dinner for no reason. I, I'm not a I have nothing to say Valentine's to that. Day. <laughs> yeah, you hate Valentine's Day. Well, I, well it's I just hope... a contrived holiday, but that's my own personal opinion. Okay. It's a it's a day to sell cards. You know what? Some, yes. Uh, and to sell flowers and to sell chocolate. Now, oh. if my husband forgets our anniversary, then he's in deep doo doo. Well, yeah. That, yes. <laughs> well, it's it just like contri- I... it may be contrived, but it's mandatory. Well, darn tootin'. Yeah. We'll see. And it's like, I can't forget. Um, I can't forget my wife's birthday because we share the same birthday. So I know that's totally cheating, but not a bad I'm idea. Of, I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> well, well, no, here's the thing. Literally, literally, we are two years apart, born on the same day. So I can't forget. That is nice. It's impossible. It's impossible for me to forget. Well, I'm lucky. My birthday is around a three day holiday. Well, now and then my anniversary is near a three day holiday. So, oh, wow. Yes. Nice. Great planning. Okay. I know. Planning. Well, I did that because we were, uh, my husband and I lived in Hawaii and uh-huh. I wanted to plan a time that would work around school schedules, work schedules. Yeah. And my father was retiring from the military. My sister was graduating from college. And I'm like, oh, this will be perfect. He'll never forget because there will be a holiday right next to it. Did you have a big wedding? I did. I had a big Polish Catholic wedding. And it was next in Hawaii. I, it was in Hawaii. So everyone had to fly um, out. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, it was helpful because if my whole family could come, it would have been crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, my dad's one of 10 kids or 67 uh, grandkids. Mm-hmm. Most of them couldn't come out. We only had about 200 people. And that oh. was most most of them were local because we had lived there for a while. Gotcha. So and so we got married on base on Hickam Air mm-hmm. Force Base. And then our reception was where I lived on um, Fort Kamehameha which is right on the mouth of Pearl Harbor. So I had an amazing wedding for virtually nothing. Excellent. The restaurant I worked for did the foods. I was also a wedding consultant at the time. I had five jobs. It's how you survive in Hawaii. And I was a wedding consultant. So all of this stuff was at cost. 
and I had a friend make the flowers, a friend from the theater did the videography, another friend from the theater did the photography. I, 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 it was fabulous. I had a huge expense of winning that cost next to nothing. Excellent. And we're talking about this, folks, because <laughs> it's Valentine's Day. It's romance is our topic. We are talking all about romantic uh, things of a romantic nature in pop culture, not just science fiction, pop culture in general. Mm. And uh, we're, where were we? Oh, I'm going to bring up one that we definitely talked about last time, but I want to hear Vicky's perspective and Ed can jump mm. in on this too. Um, the love, the life and loves of Felicity Smoke. We're talking Oliver Queen and Ray Palmer, the ultimate triangle. Vicky? <laughs> 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 okay, I'm just going to tell you that for me, it was just, I don't know, it got a little annoying after a while. <laughs> Because I love the character of Felicity, but she would go from being a really strong woman mm -hmm. to a simpering teenage girl in high school. Uh -huh. And I mean, no offense, I would have told Oliver Queen to pound sand a long time before that. <laughs> oh, um, I'm sorry. It just his his brooding got to the point. I was like, oh, my God, emo much. And you know, it's why Batman, it's why Bruce Wayne never had a steady girlfriend until Catwoman exactly. It's like, he's guys, all guys, the time come on, too. take some Xanax. Yeah, let's move forward. Um, <laughs> well, but I do feel like she, she, you, you know, she could have done better than both of them. Yeah, it, it just she, she kind of deserved better. And you know, people who, no offense, neither one of them were in a position partially because of their superhero status, partially because of their own personal characteristics and everything else i don't think either one of them were ready for commitment or a serious relationship you know what we saw with with um superman and lois mm -hmm. in this mature relationship i yeah. could not picture either of those guys with felicity having the domestic life i just i don't think either one of them possibly ever would have been in that situation and that love triangle really did get annoying after a while yeah. i i just i don't know why specifically other than i i just you know something would happen and in your head you're going dun 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 yeah. and i'm like okay i can only do that 68 times yeah. in a week um <laughs> <laughs> actually actually you brought up superman so let's stick with the uh cw what about barry allen and iris west or iris allen now that one was better uh -huh. but she also i i will tell you that that you know some of the women are really um i i don't know that it just in one episode they're they're super strong in the next episode they're not yeah and i i, I really felt I, I loved the whole arrowverse Mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons the only thing i didn't like was this interpersonal relationships i always felt like we were back in high school <laughs> well and i mean the age range these show the demographics these shows were for you know i'm sorry i don't care i mean uh, we, uh, we watch it comic book fans watched it but yeah C the cw but they is aimed going everyone the... on the cw the demographic is much lower yeah it's probably what teenage to mid-20s or something teenage like that to 25. Yeah. yeah yeah i'd yeah. say about um one thing though i i i will say this um there was something they cut they kind of okay one thing i think they did do a little bit of uh elongated man and sue dibney uh -huh. Although she didn't, yeah, although they, they didn't, they're kind of together, but right. you know, what I, for me though, it's like, I, I don't know. I was, when they, when they hinted that Sue was coming, I was like, oh, cool. Because that is probably one of my favorite uh, comic book relationships, which is elongated man and his wife, Sue. Because they just, you know, they're this, they're they're this, this great couple, you know. They gel, you know. She she takes, you know, being part of the superhero world with just, you know, she rolls with it, uh, you know. So seeing her on, I was like, man, I want to see them together. 
I know that they are kind of together, but not quite, which I'm like, ah, oh, that's too bad because yeah. I mean, I, I just feel like that's, again, that's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite couplings. And I'm just like, ah, yeah. you know, I want, well, I, 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 will... I want drop and Sue. <laughs> I will say that Barry and Iris were probably the better of all the couples yeah. in the Arrowverse. Oh, yeah. I think that they Definitely. were written better as a couple. Mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. you could believe them as a couple. Mm -hmm. um, nothing felt contrived. It, it just, and, and that I appreciate because so often, yeah. you know, even though characters are supposed to be together, sometimes the actors just don't have the right chemistry. Right. And you're like, yeah. no, no. Okay. Yeah. If it was you two playing these characters, these characters would never get together. <laughs> and I, I just, I think that they just did a good job in that respect. Uh -huh. So they were far more believable as a couple. And I could see the flash being domestic in, okay. you know, it, it yeah. just, I could see him because with everything that went on, losing his mom, losing his father, essentially for decades, right. it, it just, I could see him desperately wanting to be a dad and and, and, a, and a husband and get back what he lost. So that one was definitely the better of the choices in the um, in the Arrowverse. Yeah. And actually, it's funny. It's funny we should bring up Barry and Iris. Um, uh -huh. I recently watched the uh, the DC animated film um, Justice Society World War Two. Okay. Which it does. I mean, it, it, yeah. Well, first of all, it's, it's an animated movie featuring the Justice Society. So I was right. like, mm -hmm. heck yeah. Is it, on H is it on HBO Max? I think I so. I believe uh, it's on HBO it, Max. Yeah. I'll have to give it a look. I'll um, give it a look. But here's the thing it did, it does touch, you know, you do have the, you know, Barry, you have the Jay Garrick Flash, but you also have the, um, the, the Barry Allen Barry Flash Allen. does get involved with this stuff. Uh, one of the cool things about it, though, is they do, you know, it does have scenes with him and Iris. Uh -huh. And they actually go great together with, because one of the Justice Society is Wonder Woman. And there's like a running thing with her and Steve Trevor. Oh. Like, you know, there's a thing where Steve Trevor keeps proposing to her. Right. You know, keeps trying to get her to, you know, wear the engagement ring and she just you know she keeps like stringing him along like you know okay you know no not right now steve not right <laughs> now you know and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say like where this ends but oh, please don't we, we don't the want two, spoilers yeah yeah the <laughs> two okay what i, I don't will, want spoilers okay rather. what i will say what i will say is that the two things do end up like sharing uh you know end up like gelling thematically mm -hmm. and again i won't say how but okay. they do they do end up you know like like the two things do end up having like you know having something to do with one another um but yeah i just i and and that's cool because it's like oh wow okay i just you know it's like hey we're talking about you know we're doing a valentine's day episode and then i watch this and i'm like oh this is this is perfect um and actually there's another one there's another okay. one it's one of those things where life has this tendency of you know you say you're doing something and then suddenly something comes up and it's like oh wow this is great synergy so <laughs> in comic news oh okay. it got announced recently yeah you said you're gonna do this yeah. yeah it got announced recently in comic book news that in an upcoming issue of Iron Man, Iron Man is going to propose to his current um, his current uh, love interest, the the uh, the heroine known as Hellcat. Oh, okay. And like, make your comment that you made before because I did not hear about this. The Arrow one. The what? Okay, I failed this city. I failed. You this failed. Podcast. You failed. You failed this. So you didn't hear about it. I didn't hear about this. Uh, I did not hear. Uh, about it. I gave you an opening for your oh, joke, and geez. you missed it. Okay. No, yeah. So Hellcat, Hellcat, and Iron Man. Iron Man. Apparently, well, get married? He, well, he's at least going to propose. Whether or not okay. she says yes, uh, we're going to have to see about that. Okay. 
we're gonna have to see about that we are gonna have to see about that it's you know um i will say this i hope i hope it turns out a little better than uh i know that a couple of years ago or so uh kitty pride and colossus were supposed to go down down oh, yeah. the aisle and yeah. She, oh yeah she dropped him right as they were you know in front of all their friends and family so hopefully this is a little <laughs> better than that this is a little better than that because yeah um although i gotta say it's um just yeah <laughs> i don't know i mean i saw that and i'm like oh oh okay <laughs> uh i will say i i wonder though if uh hellcat's ex-husband is gonna mm-hmm. show up and what he's gonna think because you know for those ah, so you, we're gonna have another soap opera i don't know i mean so it's like, go ahead well you know <laughs> i do know well i mean i do know if if Patsy Walker does say yes. This will be her third marriage because uh, she was married to Buzz Baxter. Mm-hmm. Uh, that didn't work out. She then married Damien Hellstorm, and by the way, their wedding got interrupted by uh, her ex-husband. Talk about soap opera. Uh-huh. So you know that. Uh, yeah, they were. Mar- you know, she was married to Hellstorm. That that did not work out well. Like you know him. him I don't being, see how it you know, could. Well, like him being connected to, you know, dark supernatural yeah, powers kind of drove drove her insane and she committed suicide. And then, you know, uh, the Thunderbolts had to rescue her from hell. Uh-huh. So, you know, that, that, that didn't work out. So I'm just kind of wondering, you know, well, first, I wonder if Hellstorm or Baxter will, will be showing up to give their opinion or uh-huh. if, uh, you know, if things will, uh, <laughs> who knows? Because, yeah, I'm just... I'm just curious because that that like I said, you know, if you want soap opera, that's a soap opera right there. That is yeah. like that is that is fuel for like major soap opera going on. <laughs> it's All like, right. holy cow, your ex-husband's here. Which ex <laughs> which ex-husband? The supervillain or the son of Satan? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh yeah, and we thought Luke and Laura from General Hospital. Oh, no, see, that, that was my next one, Luke and Laura. Luke and Laura was my next uh, romance. Yep, we didn't, we, no. didn't get, we didn't get Luke and I Leia, but we got it. Luke and Laura. <laughs> I watched it. I was one of the many million, a million, a million of people who watched it. No, yeah. I thought it was so offensive. <laughs> Okay. I Ooh. oh yeah I did I did not like the fact because to me and I'm, I'm I apologize but it goes back to the 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 way you deal with rape is you marry your rapist and that was a big thing for a long yeah. time and I had a big problem I don't care if they had a great romance for another thirty years to me I I saw that I had a friend who watched it and I was like hell no. Well, guess you know? what? It wasn't really Luke. It was his nice I twin. I know, I know. It was only, his nice only twin. Only in the soap opera. Um, <laughs> yeah, the one who raped, uh, I don't want to talk about it, but that was the evil oh, twin. I know, I know, but Just still. Saying. Okay. And, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, um, um, Victoria Principal pulling back the, the shower curtain and, <laughs> and there's, you Bobby know. Bobby Ewing. Bobby yeah. Ewing, and it was all a bad dream. I'm like that whole I season, swear. nothing <laughs> happened in reality. Yeah, let's talk about something more positive. How okay. about Harley Go Quinn ahead. and Poison Ivy? Yes, oh, yes, I like that one. Go ahead. Yes. It's a very mod a yes. very new one because that just came about like in the last what five plus years? Yeah. Thereabouts, yeah. 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 And yeah, no, I- um, I can't remember because my my son has all of the comic books he's a huge Mm. harley quinn fan we used to watch batman the series um where she was created and Mm. just love the character love everything about the character thank you paul denny yes bruce tim and paul denny yep yeah and so it just when they got together to to me it was like oh my god that makes so much sense that just you know and and you know harley's still harley but poison is like the most calming influence on her anywhere. And so when you've got someone who's bouncing off the walls, it's always nice to have have a significant other who just kind of, you know, helps it all gel and breathe a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, they're a great yin and yang. They're really good together for the mm-hmm. most part. And it's like one of the most positive comic book relationships I've seen in a long time because yeah. it's two people who actually care about each other. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And well, and 
that's probably one of the one of the um if there's any like positive to come out of heroes in crisis mm. it would be that it would be that it also shows you know just how much um harley cares about ivy yes you know and just some of the fallout of that you know which is her uh you know just trying to come to terms with that you know so that yeah that has to be and it's like one of those things i know that you know some people are like oh i want to be like joker and harley and i'm just like no 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 no, 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 no because no. he that's kind of like you know, luke and laura there it's yes well, it's worse it's worse i think it's worse it's worse it's worse it's worse yeah it's worse. It's worse. Than, it yeah, yeah, it's worse. worse than luke and laura because the joker is just this emotionally manipulative and created yes. her and you know Emotionally... And did he ever really care about her? Was there actually any emotional connection with him okay. and her? Let's take, yeah, for example, Punchline. And because uh, of Punch... so I uh, will say no, Harley Quinn was never uh, the Joker was never romantically interested in reality with Harley Quinn. Because of the way she, he treats Punchline, the way he created Punchline, kind of like yeah. no. Well, no. even see, There's okay, no I think even okay, I think even Punchline. Like, I think even with Punchline, uh, you know, there's a problem because it's, you know, she, you know, it's obvious she has, she has, she has problems because to, to like find this guy attractive. Right. Well, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the ultimate expression. It's the ultimate expression of falling for the, it's falling for the bad. Quinn, the exact well, same thing. Uh, even she worse, was, I would she say. She was his, Okay. No, okay. even uh, I would say, well, well, first of all, I mean, with Harley Quinn, it's with Harley Quinn, it was the Florence Nightingale effect uh -huh. taken to a bad place. And what was punchline? Yeah, punchline. It's it's kind of it. Groupie oh man, taking it, yes, it's a group. It's a it's a yeah, it's a groupie thing. It's a groupie yeah. thing. It's a serial and it's killer like, groupie situation. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's a serial mm. killer groupie thing. That's what it is, and it's one of those things where I mean, I just hope. Like, honestly, if it was me, if it was uh -huh. me and I was writing for DC, I would just, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have punchline as this, you know, uber super villainous. Right. I would just have that, you know, you have this broken individual who, yes. has, who is basically heading for, I mean, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm sorry if this sounds like I'm trying to do a preachy storyline, but honestly, I would just, you know. For me, it would just be that she is heading for something really bad. Like this yeah. is something where it's heading yeah. for disaster. You know, instead no, you of feel having, that way, don't you, know, you? Like she's going to end up dying in some horrific way. And again, Joker's not going to care. He's just going to try and find someone else to create because he just likes yeah. his puppets. He likes his yeah, yeah his, exactly, his exactly. Yes this whole like and you know as soon as harley started thinking for herself he absolutely didn't want her anymore and he only wanted her to do you know it, it just it, there's a i really enjoyed the harley quinn um um animated series on hbo oh, that I, was know, really I need to watch that i need to watch that i should have watched that i haven't watched really it, really it yet yeah. and and it just there's so many things the way that um her character talks about her relationship mm. with Joker or Poison Ivy reminds yeah. her about Joker. It's like, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to be honest, I work with victims all the time. Right. It's part of my job. And it just, I've heard that talk. It just, this codependent relationship on somebody who is, I mean, the nicest thing I could call Joker is abusive because yeah. he's so much more than that. I yeah. mean, he's way over the top yeah. and there is nobody in his life he cares about more than himself. Everybody exactly. there is a tool for him. His henchmen, these these women he's created, they're just tools for him. That's it. Oh yeah. Oh no. You know what? It's um kind of related to this. When I think of the Joker, I think of there was a um there was a comic crossover in the nineties called Underworld Unleashed. Yes, I remember that. Which was, you know, I mean, for those for those who don't remember, it was a demon uh, named Neron or Neuron or something. Neron. Like, I called him ne Neron, but you're Neron, right, Neron I, probably. It's yeah, probably Neron. Neron. Okay. I don't know. Mark Wade, help. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and Mark, if you want, want if, to contact us, you know where we are. Yeah, please let us know. Or if somebody who knows how to pronounce it. But anyway, uh, you know, it was him trying to 
boost the powers of supervillains, but he had oh. he had like a he had like an inner circle yeah. of like of you know big name villains to be like his advisors and stuff. One of them was the Joker, and the narrator of the miniseries, uh, the Flash villain Trickster. Mm-hmm. You know ah. when when like his his inner circle is being introduced, and Joker shows up. You know he's narrating and he's going, "Oh great, Neuron, pick the one guy nobody wants to be with." When villains want to scare each other, they tell Joker stories. Yeah, yes, and that okay. He that, is the boogeyman. Yeah, that for me has always informed like how I would see Joker. Like, yes, um, like for example, if I'm writing a comic and it's a bunch of you know it's a bunch of like you know, uh, hench types at a bar. Right. And they're all comparing, you know, they're all comparing like rumors of who's looking for guys for gigs. Like, you know, there'd be one guy who'd be like, Hey, I hear Joker's looking for, for people. <laughs> and that that's when the entire bar just yeah. goes quiet. And then there are guys going, no, nah, man, don't take it. It's like, yeah, but you know, I heard he wants to do this. And it's like, no, nah, don't take it. I know a guy who took it and he ended up in the hospital and you know, he's, he has to go talk to a shrink every Thursday. You know, it's like, no, don't do it. Hey, I knew a guy who, who hench for the Joker and the Joker threw him off a building to get yeah. Batman off his toes. Yeah. It's like, that's the thing. He's the guy you don't like the people who, the people who know better, you know, the will be right. like, no, 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 don't do it. And going back to what we're saying, Harley and, uh, and, oh, yeah. and, Rayton, and poison and Ivy, poison just, Ivy. Watch, no, you, you have people, to, but there's so much fun. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. you have to watch the animated series on HBO max because their relationship is shown there. Yes. Yeah, yeah no, I, I mean, mean I it's, it's a it's big part of the show. Sirens. Um, and then what was the comic series? My son has the new 52s, the new 50, uh, the new 52 are you talking about like birds of prey or something well there's there's birds of prey and then mm. sirens is coming out or and Jake there's a regular out. harley quinn and then there's the, yeah the regular harley yep. quinn and yeah it's it's one of those things that my son is very much enjoys those whole series yeah. and so i've been kind yeah. of stealing them from him. <laughs> Like, I, hey, I need to know more. <laughs> I liked when I like when Sam Humphreys was writing it. That was really funny. Uh, oh, and the, hey, Gail and uh, you yeah, know, Gail, Simone and, and Simone yeah. did yeah, and Simone did Birds of Prey, and yeah, well that that was more and yeah, Simone doing Birds of Prey was more Barbara Gordon, but hmm. you know Har- Harley did have her her share. You know? Yeah, but yeah, you and, have to sit. You know, uh, if we can, okay. If we can switch gears for a second, okay, we have just a second, so go okay, ahead. We had to, oh, okay, wait, oh, or, or wait, we're, oh, we're you almost wrapping up. You want to hold it for the yeah, extra? I'll hold it. Yeah, let's hold it. Let's hold okay. it for the extra because there is something you know and that that I wanted to bring up. I was thinking about that, and I was like, yeah. In fact, I was actually talking about that the other day. So if yeah, let's, are, let's hold it for. If you are interested in hearing what that has to say and more, talking about the pop culture romances that we are discussing for Valentine's Day. We ask you to find the Marku 42's Universe podcast, which you can find on Geekcast Radio Network at our website, marku42.com, and all around the web. In, uh, and, and I was going to say Spotify, but maybe not. <laughs> that, that is horrible what's going on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we may drop it there. But listen to us on Spreaker, on, uh, Apple, I, on uh, Apple Podcasts, on Google Play. Google Podcasts, everywhere around the web. Stick around. We'll be right back. Ah, brave new world that has such putzes in it. The Pull Bag is GCRN's comic book review and discussion-based podcast. Join me, your host, TF2 and Mike, and the rest of the GCRN crew as we make our way through the comics we are reading. Inside the Pull Bag, you'll also find back-issue classics and Origins episodes of how we got into comic reading. You can find the Pull Bag every Wednesday on iTunes and on www.geekcastradio.com. Make your great escape into comics and jump into the Pull Bag today. Oh, yeah. Think of the fun. Extra, extra. 
Welcome to the Mark Who 42's Universe podcast here on the Geekcast Radio Network, markwho42.com, and all around the interweb thingy like Spreaker, like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all that fun stuff. In fact, if you're listening to this, you probably already know that this segment isn't on our flagship station, Subspace Radio. This is a special extra edition that those people don't get to hear, but you are so lucky you get to hear more from us. I'm Mark Baumgartner. With me are Vicky Jakabowski, Eduardo M. Fryer, and Zion Kiros is finally here. Yeah, Zion wasn't here the, during the actual show for subspace, but he's here now. Hi, Zion. Hi. How you doing on Valentine's Day? Because this is our Valentine's show. Um, I mean, I'm putting the moves on Mrs. Brown. So, yeah. <laughs> she Good. has a lovely daughter, doesn't she? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I think that's where he was I going. I love Herman's Hermits. Uh, Herman's Hermits are great. Yeah, Peter Noon. I saw him in concert at Disney. No, oh. I was talking about Perry. At, at Epcot, in the Epcot. Uh, I the- saw him in concert. Uh, I think it was Fort Bliss. Can't remember which base I was on. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking anyway, about Perry. Oh, Perfect Gilliam. I'm sorry. You were talking <laughs> about Perfect Gilliam. Okay, yeah, uh, I'm not. Uh, yeah, she's lovely to look at. I'll tell you that. Uh, but uh, been, she, yeah. Zion, Zion, you do know that you'll have to uh, fight Brian Blessed for her hand, right? <laughs> look, look. I mean, I don't know. Are you are you ready for that? I mean, this Wait, is look, look. It's like I um, accept the challenge. Look, there's, no, there's Mark. There don't ever do that again. Because look, I shot him with the DMAC gun, so he doesn't exist anymore. So okay, that's uh, what I'm taking care of. Okay, I uh, I think I think some fans of Flash Gordon are gonna be mad at you for killing King <laughs> Bolton. I'll stop. I'll stop it. Um, Please. Yeah. So Please. we're discussing uh, today. We've been discussing Valentine. It's Valentine's Day, so we've been discussing romances in pop culture. We did something similar to this two years ago on Valentine's Week, but this time we're trying it again with our new co-host Vicky Jakabowski and we're talking mostly about other romance couples and other romantic things uh that have happened or you know occur we talked about uh the Felicity Smoke love triangle we talked about Poison Ivy and and Harley Quinn we talked about Han and Leia and maybe Luke and Leia a little gets kind of um <laughs> Luke and Laura from General we've been talking all over and now let's go to Ed for our next romantic uh, gesture. Well, actually, you know what? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch gears for a second. Oh, okay. Because I feel like you know I was when I as I was doing show prep because you do show prep. Yes, we do. We do show yes, prep. Yes, we do. It's very good. Um, you know, I, this came into my head, and this is a discussion actually I've had with Trish okay. after we saw after we saw this, um, because we had seen the movie en- Encanto, which oh, oh yeah. I saw that beautiful I that. That was great beautiful beautiful movie, and as usual. Lin-Manuel, uh, Lin-Manuel, you know, every time he does music, something's going to get stuck in your head and you're going to be like, how did this get stuck in my head? But then when you realize <laughs> it, when you realize it's Lin-Manuel, you're like, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. that's funny. We were watching it and we didn't know Lin-Manuel did the music. And all of a sudden, Randy goes, ah, this must be Lin-Manuel because it sounds like the same type of music from Hamilton. We look in the like, oh, it is Lin-Manuel. I forgot which song it was, but it was to- it was somewhere in the, the yeah. first third that totally sounded like it could have been you know in Hamilton. What? I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if it was uh, La Family Madrigal. That was it. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Yep. Yep. I figured it had to be one of those. Um, yeah. So yeah, to me, it's yeah for me. Um, yeah, the thing, the reason I bring it up is because one of the things that struck me. Uh, about the film is notice that the main character Mirabel she doesn't have a love interest yes there is no love interest you're right the closest the closest thing we get to a love interest is uh, her sister Isabella or of course you're supposed to say it Isabella you know, <laughs> uh, you know she has like a betrothed but it's kind of it's kind of more along the lines of like, well, you know, it's a it, it's a matchmaking, and it's like, well, <sighs> does she really want to, or you know, yeah, like well, that. And, and sometimes, you know, th- th- this story didn't need her to have a love interest, and I right. truly enjoy. I mean, you get the same thing 
in Merida in Brave, where mm-hmm. who they love, if they fall in love, if they have any sort of rela- that's irrelevant to the story being told. There's another purpose for this story. Yeah. You don't need to worry about happily ever after. And she sometimes loved her family. That's absolutely yes. And that was where it needed to focus. And you know, yeah. both those movies are about families and yeah. about dealing like, with your like families. Like Fast and the Furious family. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. You are not. You are not no. dragging that meme in here. No. 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 Okay, no. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Go back to me. <laughs> no. No. <sighs> Uh, I think we should move on to Zion. Well, uh, well, oh, okay. Let's yeah, take please, a break from please, that. Zion please. is a romantic uh, <laughs> pop culture thing. Sorry. Um, hmm. Should have um, stopped for a moment, didn't it? <laughs> did anyone bring up City of Death yet? No, go ahead. No. City of Death. Uh, no. Okay, so yeah. like um, Dr. M. Romana, like I never like actually like saw them as like a thing prior to that episode. But like ever since that episode came up and like this is completely like disregarding that they were married like at not le- at that point at least on screen everything from that point episode uh, the dynamic changed and i was like okay they're a thing but they're not a thing because mm-hmm. this is doctor who obviously yeah. in, in like the late 70s or early 80s right no. and yeah i i overall liked it personally like um prior to this i don't know if a- anyone else like felt this watching the classic series but i had a certain feel between the fourth and on Leela kind of issue. This was weird. But that is weird because Tom Baker yeah. didn't get along with uh Louise Jameson back really? then. Wow. Yeah, he was res- he resented her well didn't resent I know that's too strong a word, but he you know he he lost Elizabeth Sladen as a as a actress companion. Mm-hmm. And then he, so he was upset about that. And then Deadly Assassin he had no companion and his idea was let's do the show without a companion and they foisted louise jameson on her on him and so he was kind of didn't treat her uh as well as he should have as well as other doctors treat their uh ac- the actresses that are playing the companions and so there was animosity but in, since big finish they've been they, they had already uh, made up and their relationship is much better now interesting but yeah so it's interesting that you see because like the doctor and leela it was more, it was like Eliza Doolittle. It, it was, it was, uh, mm. my fair lady. Mm-hmm. And, and I, and I guess it was romance and that. So maybe I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, I, I, I was about to say, Mark, that yeah, with the doctor and Leela, it was kind of more a my fair lady, Eliza yeah. Doolittle, Henry Higgins type of thing. But they got but, together, didn't they? Uh, yeah, maybe not. Not really, not really. Not really. Not to mention, if we go with the if we go with the stage play Pygmalion, they did not. True. If true. we go with, if we go, I'm with, talking about the uh, Rex Harrison movie. Yeah, I uh, I don't know if get together so much. Maybe as, not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like to double bag to uh, see a death. It, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, like, we tangent. It is just like how, how how it's like shot, like with them running, holding hands, and then they're do, running do, again, do. holding hands, yep, 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 yep. running again, yeah. holding hands, smile, smile. Everyone's smiling, like they're always <laughs> smiling throughout yeah. the episode. It's just an overall good time. You just feel like this episode clicked in, in, immensely more than any yeah. else. Not episode, at least in terms of like between Doctor Companion without actually saying. Hey, Doctor and Companion, or you know, a thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is just uh, in case anyone from Weekend Tardis is listening to this. My Doctor Who fan club down in South Florida. One of the things we are showing this Sunday coming up uh, at our meeting, our February Valentine's meeting, is City of Death. We are Ooh, showing it. We sweet. I haven't told I haven't told anyone what we're showing, but I'm you know if they're listening, and I know some of them, some of you uh, out there do. We're showing City of Death and The Husbands of River Song. Those are our two romances. Just throwing it out there. So it's like a it's like a bonus spoiler to people coming to my club meeting because I haven't announced that. Just saying. Can I shoot one more out there? Okay. Um, have did anyone talk about Reed and Sue yet? Oh no, no we have not no. talked about Reed Fantastic and Sue. Four, no. Okay, so um yeah, why does this man keep losing to the fish man? Like he's supposed to be the smartest man on on the planet, 
but yet he can't realize <laughs> what, Namor is sexier what makes his wife than happy. Reed. I'm sorry. Well, I, I think well, it's because Namor walks around, Namor just walks because around he's book smart without does a shirt. Not mean he's romance smart. I'm just I gonna know. say that. <laughs> Namor I walks around funny. without a shirt. Yeah, and he's got well, muscles. So I'm just okay. Saying. I think he's gotten a bad rap because it's writers and it's this misconception that Reed is neglectful, that he thinks too much of his of his work, that he ignores Sue. So you know, you kind of have well, this. You know, that I, was in the early days too. That isn't well, recent. Just, that was in the well. Well, I think it's re- Jack Kirby. Well, here's the thing. I think in recent in recent times. That's been kind of pushed to the fourth, you know, that the fact that, you know, it's one of those things where it's been made more of an issue. Okay. Than it really is supposed to be. Yeah. And uh, like I like mean, they bring that... it out of left field sometimes. Like um, there was this story that I was reading called Spider-Man Life Story. And Peter and Reed were apparently science um co co-people, right? Yeah, and right. like they got into an argument, and like Peter just came out and, and said, "Well, this is why your wife, or, or, or your wife, left you for uh, for a man that was <laughs> under the sea." And I'm like, "Why do we need to bring that up again? Like, why <laughs> well, are we always I going there?" Because Spider Man was because Peter Parker was upset, and when you're upset, you do zingers. Yes, you do. Yeah, but I will say that uh, when I was growing up, reading Fantastic Four type stories, uh-huh. um, and some of the side stories in Spider Man. For me, I always felt like he looked down on her. Now, I will say that the generation of comic books that I read really focused on, uh, it it really showed what it was like in real life for women. I don't think the artists and the writers were thinking that. But, you know, she was a child to him. She Mm -hmm. She was not a fellow superhero. Right. You know, and, and I felt like he was always keeping crap from her. Yeah. And he was it just, he was. you know, it's like, oh, you just sit over there and look pretty, honey. I don't remember him actually ever saying that, but that was the impression I got well, when, I mean, I was he younger, always, when I was reading them. He always wanted her not to get into action, you know, stay here. We're going to take Quiet. care of right. this. And, and what Let she would then. do uh, a lot of times when they're showing the personal lives, you know, Reed's working on some scientific thing. And and Sue is going shopping for a dress. Yeah. Or cleaning the house. Well, you know, cleaning the well, she yeah, I, I don't think they actually showed her cleaning the house. Yes, but they yeah. have. Yes, did they, they have. Yeah, I think also did they go that far? I don't remember right, yes. that, but okay. Yes, well, I it. Okay, I think also part of it is, and if I can take a page from Disney Plus, uh-huh. Part of it also, you look at the old the older comics. Mm-hmm. It's very much, um, as they say on Disney Plus, you know, may contain outdated cultural depictions. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's. But there's a little bit of that now. I realize I've not read any of the more recent ones, mm-hmm. but no offense with all of her super skills, you know, it just, I mean, she's got some really massive powers that yeah. there's a lot of times it's like, and why the hell didn't you use her? Oh my gosh, you could have wiped them out with one click. Yeah. Give me a break. Yeah. Um, I feel like sometimes they, they it, it just some of the characters who had some of the best skills, not just the female ones, but it was like at the last moment, it's like, oh, hold it. Captain Marvel can wipe them out in, in, in one one whoosh. So let's just yeah. have her come in and suddenly save the day. Or it's a weird thing that I think that um I don't want to call it lazy writing, but it's like, oh, hold it, we got someone who could do that. We should have them do that. Yeah. Um, and they come in on the last episode and suddenly save the day. But I feel like Sue Storm always was. And I think that's why I had a problem with Jessica Alba because she was playing the character all mousy and sure, right. whatever you want, honey. Yeah. It's okay, honey. I'm like, oh my God, please. My husband's favorite well, thing. And is then they try. Well, here's the thing because I know that some, I know that some modern interpretations try to make Sue a scientist. Mm-hmm. And it's like, really? I don't think, I don't think, because I think, um, I think, like for example, fan force the fan forestic movie. You know, the uh-huh. 2015 movie. They made Sue a scientist, and I think the Ultimate Comics made her a scientist. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, I kind of feel like you don't need. I kind of feel like the only reason they're doing that is to give an excuse as to why she's around. Why she was and it's on like the, why she was on the rocket in the first right. place. I mean, I think that you don't need. Like, first of all, you don't need to make her a brainiac like Reed. Mm -hmm. right but if you want to do something so like for example why not make her you know 
if she's into science, why not make it psychology? You know, why not? Yeah. Like, if you want to make her more than just this mousy uh, blonde that the the smart guy was hanging out with, okay, find something that isn't just making her a clone right. of her male counterpart. Give her her own aspects. And no offense, right. when you think about most... Um, uh, let, let's just look at most uh, shuttle missions. You've got the people who are the pilots. You have right. the people who are the scientists. You have the people who can. And then the girlfriend the and his and her girlfriend and her brother for the ride. Well, that yeah, always that, happens that on the shuttle. Little, that always that happens on the shuttle. That was always a little weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that's why but, you have to change well, see, the character well, too because know, it made no make, sense. She was there. Well, well, but at least purpose. okay. But but then here's the thing: because at least with with Johnny Storm. You could fit in that he's the co-pilot. You know, you could fit in that he right. has skills. You know, that's the, th- <laughs> Did he that's really? the thing. Well, you know, he does. He, he does, remember cute, he does have and a. He knew how to flame on. That's right. about all he had. Well, and he, he raced hot he was rod what we cars, call him both. and he was a playboy. And, and right. Well, you know, hey, um, you know, but it, but it's like, yeah, I mean, you can you can give her her own agency that it doesn't yeah. have to be that she's a scientist as well, True. or she could be in another type of science. Medical, she could be a medical doctor. Medical, so medical right, so she's, on the sh- she's on the ship to make sure psych- everyone's all right. Or again, psychological. Psychological to she make could, sure everyone be, can yeah. handle the flight. See, and those would all work. Right. But yeah, I agree with you. Just um, because we have so many scientists. We have the evil scientists. We we have the Peter Parkers and, and the Reeds. And, and Dr. I, Doom. I, I, oh, sorry, I forgot about Dr. Doom. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm losing my comic book card. Um <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just you know making i love those ideas that making her um intelligent in one of the other mediums in one of the other areas that would make perfect logical sense um something that you know no offense we didn't do that in the 60s we were we, we, we did. there's a lot of things we ignored in the comic books in the 60s and 70s yeah. <laughs> But I love the character herself because there are many times that she's very strong. She's very um, powerful. Uh, she doesn't even re- really truly realize all of her powers right away. <clears throat> and I always loved that character, except for when she was with Reed. I felt like that was a bad relationship. Not as bad as Joker and Harley. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was just a bad relationship. He was holding her back. Yeah. And... And I just feel that it makes sense that she she finds love elsewhere because you know they don't hold her back. I'm sorry. And you actually, know, like, um, it, actually you know, Zion, you mentioned uh, Spider-Man life stories, right? Mm-hmm. Has anybody? Did you know that there's actually been a comic of uh, of Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four life stories? Yes, I hated it. You hated it, okay? Yes, because they condensed everything that Spider-Man is supposed to be. Because well, Spider Man was a trip through sixties, seventies, eighties, and and it was a specific point in time. Like um, in 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 the sixties was around Vietnam, so Flash was going to go to Vietnam, but it's like only in like a certain point in time, like it's like a week or like a minute, maybe like a certain day. While in the first issue of of like the Fantastic Four is like the sixties one now, and they go through the entire year, like like you have no time for for a uh, further development. Or what's going on? Oh. It's just like that. It's like snippets through that year, and you didn't have time to stick around. But like, hey, look, uh, Galactus is coming apparently, and uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, it's not as substance based as the Spider Man was, and yeah. Okay, that's about it. Okay, because it did. Because I mean, if you notice, it did touch on uh, Reed and Sue. Yeah, and just how, and it did. It did pop up that whole thing of how you know Reed kind of put science a little bit too much into uh you know put he put science a little bit too ahead of his own family yeah um yeah. It, it is funny you say that because um um have you read the um hickman run of, or fantastic, of fantastic uh, i i actually i read uh, i think i read a couple of issues here and there okay um the, there's a point where a council of reads from from the multiverse me uh-huh. the read from from the 616 universe and they all have infinity gauntlets from the universe it, it's absolutely insane and um but like they like start talking to reed and like try and, and try like recruit him to like join the council of reeds yeah right what, it, question mm. 
Uh, no, I have a question. The Hickman, you're talking about the one, the run that was concurrent to F to the FF. 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 Okay. Foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, the council reads and said, you're holding yourself back. Um, I understand that you love your family. I love my, I love Sue. We all love Sue. And, but you're holding yourself back. We are meant to do something <laughs> out here in the multiverse and become what we are supposed to become. You can join us, but you would have to split with your family because you're holding yourself back. And it's, and it's interesting that like, this isn't just a problem in just read, but a, a, a multiversal problem with read. Like, Technically, our read is the better read out of all the other reads. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> because he said, Oh, I like my family. I'm gonna stay. Huh. And I was yeah. like, wow, that's insane. That even here, who says this guy is a terrible husband, he still ends up being the better husband of himself in the multiverse. Now Very there's a scary stuff. thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that actually says something, and it's something that you see in relationships in uh, comics and other pop culture where, mm -hmm. you know, so often, you, you know, you can't be the great whatever you are and have attachments. It's like, well, yes, but when you take all that human attachment away, then you get stuck with the Jedi Council that says, <laughs> you know, yeah, that you, 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 there are no attachments in being a Jedi. Take it off. Really? That's yeah. what, that's when you lose your humanity. That's when Definitely. you lose everything about you that makes you wonderful if you don't care about other people and don't have relationships i think having relationships make characters better mm -hmm. the ones who who you know deny all other relationships i i think that 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 it's a bad path and i think too often we've seen how it's blown up in people's faces however however we watched anakin end up in the dark side and that well, that's because Anakin had a temper, okay? Uh, yeah, but he has he, the Jacobowski okay. temper. <laughs> yeah, but with Anakin, um, with Anakin, the thing is, is that yeah, the Jedi's, the whole Jedi, you know, we don't have attachments. We don't, you know, we try to. It and back, then the dark like, side. I, I saw. Well, that. I saw. I saw a meme. I saw a meme. I think I forget if it was today or the other day where it was like, it wasn't so much that Anakin fell to the dark side. It was more that he was pushed. Yes. The Jedi's, you know, the, the whole Jedi um, way pushed him towards it because, you know, he couldn't be, he couldn't, uh, yeah, he could not, you know, be upfront about his relationship with Padme. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was something that had to be kept on the down low. They got married in secret, yeah. you know, they yeah. had to keep it as this, this, this quiet little thing, like, shh, 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 can't tell anybody. And that's no way to have, like, a relationship. That's no way to have, uh, you know, that's no way to Not love. Not when the dark side's telling you you can have it all. <laughs> right, yeah, and exactly. the Jedis are saying, you can't, you can't, you can't. Yeah, yeah you exa know? exactly. Guess what? It suddenly looks a lot more attractive to be on the dark side. It's yeah. always better to be, it's always fun. Well, that is true. That is absolutely it's true. Well, well, here's well, no, no, you it's always a lot okay. more scenery when you're the villain. Yeah, actually, definitely. actually, well, well, here's the thing. Hang on, I would not say it's better to be the villain, but what the I actors would enjoy say, playing it. Okay, yes. what, I, what I would okay, what I would say, what I would say about being the villain, you know, it appears that you're having more fun. Like, uh, you know, to bring up Disney, I'm going to bring up Disney. I'm going to bring up the Pinocchio, Pleasure Island. Okay, you know, we have Pleasure Island, which is supposed to be. A place where no rules, you know, do whatever you want, you know, uh, we don't have to listen to our to our stinky parents, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, what ends up happening? You know, they end up losing their humanity. They end up getting turned into donkeys and, you know, uh, sold into probably sold into slavery. Yes. Uh, you know, it's, you know, so that's the thing. Being a villain, it appears to be, you know, like uh, bringing up Harry Potter, you know, bring up Harry Potter. Voldemort supposedly found the key to immortality mm -hmm. with the Horcruxes, but okay. you know, you look at you look at it, and it's it's like, yeah, it's having half a life. It's you know, uh, when he first when he was first defeated, you know, when he tried to kill Harry Potter and the spell backfired. You know, he was he was a face in the back of somebody's head. He had to like, you know, he had this vampiric thing about needing you know <laughs> needing blood to survive. That's not a life. 
you know, it's just, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. You know, it, it's like, that's the thing. There's always the, there's always with, with evil, there's always mm-hmm. the monkey's paw. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's the monkey's paw. I it's like, like okay. Monkey's paw. I'm sorry. No, I, I just like the story. Uh, of the monkey's paw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well then say you like the story. I like the saying... story of the monkey's paw. Sorry. I don't actually so you like have the story a because I don't actually big... have a monkey's paw to to love. I just like the story. Uh, uh, but 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 you but you get what I'm saying. You you understand what I'm getting at. That like there is that. It's not you know evil may look appealing, but there's always a price. There's always that little. Of course, there is. There's always you yeah. know what, what's what's going to be the catch. Sure, you're going to get this, but what is it going to you know. What's it going to yeah, like in you? like in Die Hard? You know, Hans was having fun with, it, and except the the bad thing was he falls off the building and dies. <laughs> that is the bad thing. That, that's the bad thing. He was having a great time. No, he, he well, got well, to yeah. chew the scenery. He got to chew the scenery. Had a good time. Fell, died. Okay, I eh, I don't know, no? but yeah, I mm, doesn't quite work. I, I would okay. say that I would say that. Uh, you know, if we want to keep going with our original thing with Anakin, yeah, you know, he goes to the dark side, he lets his anger take over, mm-hmm. kills mm-hmm. the woman he loves, yes, I'm... kills the woman yes. he loves, and loses his humanity because he yes. gets, you know, he ends up having to having to become a cyborg because he got, um, you know, because he lost in battle against his former friend and mentor, right? If... You know, he broke he broke heart like end of the end of the day oh yeah he has all these great powers but he's lost everything if if he had never gone with padme like the jedi said and did so it would he wouldn't have been in the relationship and lose her no would, but i think would he, would he still, still have gone over to the dark side yes because we saw well, he, the hints of it mm-hmm. when he, he loses his mother yeah. So he was already on that path. He was already listening right. to the emperor. Mm-hmm. He was already falling for every trick. He was already questioning them without the whole issue of the love affair with Padme. Okay. okay. But that was that probably just made it happen faster. Yeah. And it's interesting because their love story was so great and so negative all at the same time. She overlooked his flaws. And clearly, here's a guy we have with PTSD who definitely could have used an amazing therapist and uh, <laughs> and dealt with his anger issues. And maybe then maybe he wouldn't have been Darth Vader. But, right. you know, it just it, it was almost like he was destined to go there. And this just sped it up. But he loved her so much that he was oftentimes irrational and okay sometimes stupid but uh mm-hmm. it, it just it's one of those things where it could have turned into this great romance yeah but it was doomed to fail from the start he was already under the thumb of the uh, of who later became the, the yeah. emperor he was yeah. already there and so by the time he met her again and fell head over heels it was too late he was gotcha. already being groomed okay well the other the other problem also is that the jedi thought he was this you know messiah this you know the chosen Maybe. one yes and here's the thing because it seems like he knew about it so here we have somebody who it's like you're being told you're going to be the hottest thing on uh you know the hottest thing with a lightsaber in a robe mm-hmm. you know you're supposed to be the chosen one you're supposed to be the savior of the galaxy right and it's like That's how are you supposed to you know wear. yeah yeah exactly so so you know some of his cocky attitude it's like well you created the monster because you're telling right. him he has this great destiny okay okay back to love yeah let's get to love because we were just i don't know valentine you know we just dropped this the day after valentine's and, and we're talking to, to, yeah, let's go back to love and romance thing well Make let's get a happy a show modern. a happy show well, it, it's not really modern but it's kind of come to the general consciousness okay it would be wanda and vision 
okay. Scarlet oh, Witch yeah. and Vision, which of course there were comic series that goes back quite a few years. But I mean, not not as far back as like Batman or Superman. But you know, they they were a very interesting couple in the comics. And I have to tell you, I love this version of them in the MCU. And of course, okay. I oh, love yeah. WandaVision, the yeah. TV show, mm. because there's again something that grew out of love. Did she make some mistakes? Yes, but you you know her desire to keep her love alive is so strong, and when you have someone that powerful. You, you know, it's, she's created a magic spell out of love, not hate, love. Yeah. yeah. Well, and she even tried to like with the other residents of Westview, you know, she was trying to, you know, she was trying to make it completely I- idyllic. She just, yes. you know, she was doing it not, you know. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was horrible that she was controlling people's minds, but, yep. you know, the town was dying. People were out of work and, and she tried to give them some semblance of a happy life. Um, albeit it, you know, it didn't work out the greatest, mm. but um, it, it just, it's amazing that, that, that someone could love someone so much that they essentially created a mini universe just so they could keep them alive. Uh, yeah. But then yeah, again, you, you know, we've also seen when, when um, Dr. Strange did that <laughs> in what if, boy, that, yeah, that, yeah, that one, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that one, yeah, that's a really bad version of, of trying to keep love alive. Yeah. It just, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't meant to be. Whereas Vision and Wanda, I think that that it will be. I don't know how it will look, but you know the the Vision body that they recreated, that you know then the Wanda Vision made and you know opened its mind. So what's that going to be? What's that going to give us next? Are we going to get Vision back? Is he going to have Vision's memories of Wanda and refall in love with her? And I'm really rooting for them. I don't know. Yeah. If- what it is but i'm rooting for them to succeed i want them to succeed yeah okay yeah and i knew that um i i will say that um i yeah and i know that in the comics that uh relationship you know i don't think i i think i don't think that they ever got it back from yeah. What I, from what I remember, um, because yeah, it just. But I know that they're. Um, I know that they, they kind of like Vision has gotten his his mind back. Yeah. You know, or at least his old. So you know they, they lost it, but at the same time, um, there is kind of. You know, they lost it, but at the same time, at least Vision got his humanity back. Yeah. Yes. Mind, mind you, it's, it's you know, it's kind of a, I, I forget how to pronounce the word, but it's like, yeah, you know, it's, I don't know, you know, like, I forget how to pronounce the word, but that definitely, you know, it's, it's lost, but at least like there's a chance, you know, maybe, maybe someday a writer will be like, okay, let's, you know, let's, let's get them back together. At least it's it's there for it, you know. the The pieces are there if they want to. Yeah. Okay. Let me bring. We said this was pop culture and not just science fiction movies, comics. <laughs> so we're going to bring. I'm going to bring up a pop culture uh, romance. And unfortunately, you know, we talked about Luke and Laura and things like that. How about Norman Lear's original romances? I'm talking Archie and Edith Bunker and George and Louise <laughs> Jefferson. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. okay. So there's okay. a real set of marriages. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, yeah. okay. Archie and Edith. Archie, uh, and he always took shots at Edith, put her down, but they were tight. He, they loved each other until near the end where he cheats on her. But you know, it, they did have great love for each other. And George and Lu- and Wheezy uh, argued like crazy, but you could see they were totally devoted to each other you know yeah uh vicky you probably are at the right age range to remember these shows oh yes yeah what what is your take on these um it's funny because you know yes you've got some of the tropes of a sitcom especially a sitcom family and a relationship as it often was depicted back then But at the same time, I mean, I never once doubted that George cared for his wife. Yeah. 
Um, although I think sometimes Weezy was like, oh, why do I love him? Um, well, but but, but <laughs> if the way he argued with her, I totally can see her saying that and thinking that. Yes, because she often was the right one. Yeah. And she often was the, okay, hon, we're going to do this the smart way. Um, and and so by the end was, of the episode, not... by the end of the episode, he always agreed with her. Yes, he did. Because she that was that the right was one. kind of a fun you know relationships have their ups their downs their mm-hmm. sideways so that one felt a little bit more real yes it was mm-hmm. contrived yes it had many of the tropes but <laughs> but it felt more realistic yeah. to a relationship whereas i'm gonna be quite frank that that i mean i can't see how anyone would stay with archie well uh, yeah and and, and uh, i probably I, would eject him like on on the day after the wedding and said yeah. okay we're starting over there's an um, episode where she decks him, where she's beating oh, him that's up. Right. I, I forgot remember. about that one. You're right. Huh. I, I just it's it's an interesting. Um, so it, it was kind of a kind of an abusive relationship, but it was. It, and what's but, the, what's the term I'm looking for uh, with her staying with an abusive relationship? Um, ah, yes. Uh, codependent, is, codependent is one word for it. Yeah. And it just I can understand and especially putting it in the context of the times Mm -hmm. that in some ways was also very realistic. Yeah. Because, you know, women did not get the right to divorce their husbands until after 1970. Yeah. And to, for all 50 States to come along, took another couple decades. And so the fact that a woman would stay in a relationship like that is actually not surprising. That would have been, the norm. I'm going to guarantee you there's a lot of women who watch that show with, uh-huh, I know exactly how she feels. Yeah. Because times had changed by that point. Mm-hmm. Laws had changed. There were so many things that now it allowed, and no offense, the show really had run its course. And it kind of, you know, still breaks your heart yeah. because there was always a little bit of hope that Archie yes. would get it. Yeah. You know, Norman Lear had created this kind of you know, vision upon ourselves, you know, guys, uh, this is what we're like. We need to not be this, yes. you know, this, this is, this, you know, this it came out, you know, we've got the civil rights movement going on. We've got all these things and it's really highlighting just how bad it can be, but with a funny twist. Cause when people are laughing, they don't realize they're looking yeah. at themselves, but then it, it just went on too long because yeah, I, that kind of premise and that kind of purpose has a finite run. It's different for everything, but yeah. it just it, it just got to be annoying and well, and OK, we know he's an idiot. Can we yeah. move on? But, you know, and I bring up Archie Bunker's place at the end of it after Edith, Archie's character softened and he wasn't as abusive. And yes, he was actually the smart. He was actually the good, smart one of the series compared to some of the other people on the show. He was the voice of reason, which I completely know. was different. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, but I mean, you can bring in the Ropers, their relationship. How did she? Oh. Steal I don't know. Hmm. Now, there's a lot of things, we, and and it's not just the the sixties and the seventies. No. There's quite a few cringy shows going forward mm-hmm. where they're like, okay, that would be good for a TV movie of the week. <laughs> it would be funny. Then we can move on, but. The problem is, is once you have a series of jokes, you can't keep making that same joke. I mean, Three's Company is a perfect example of it was a great joke. But kind of after the first season, everything else was just telling the joke over and over again. It's like, I'm terribly sorry, but we already had this joke. Well, I mean, they took they took the concept from Man About the House in England and that lasted a number a number of seasons. And then it broke off the uh, the characters that were supposed to be the Ropers got their own show then uh the 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 jack character got his own show so it totally played like the american series but you're right the joke but i think they was not funny after a while in britain yeah um, oh, but yes they yes let's, I definitely let's admit, admit that. that they yeah. like to do mm-hmm. and and there's a reason we have the the term jump the shark yeah it, it just there are many shows that kind of wear out their welcome mm-hmm. they have a premise it's really great um but I even noticed, I even noticed this with South Park. I, um, I was watching an episode with my son. I'm like, oh, this must be an early one. He's like, no, this is the one that just came out last month. I'm like, 
I swear to God, there was an episode just like this 20 years ago. <laughs> I swear yeah. I've seen this episode yeah. because this is going to happen. This is going to happen. Yep. Like, okay. They're recycling. There comes a time when the premise just is no longer going to work or we're seeing repeats of the same story yeah. at that point. No offense, people. I don't care how much money you're making. It's not the good quality anymore. No. Take that money, put it into something new. Let's do something new. Let's do something different. Definitely. And it kind of goes to all the will he, won't he, will they get together? Won't they get together? I mean, my God, I see one more show about, you, you know, oh, they're going to, they're going to be married by the end of this series, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm like, oh, please, can we do something else? Yeah. yeah. Let's start with them. I mean, it's one of the things going back to the beginning of this conversation. Um, the Lois and Superman series is we've gotten past all that. Yeah. We're now to the point where yep. they're married, they have a family, and they're yep. dealing with real life. I yep. think that's one of the reasons that show works so much is because mm-hmm. we got to bypass the same tropes about Lois and Superman that we've been watching or reading about since 19, was it 39? 38, no, it was 1938, 30. yeah. Um, Action Comics 1 came out in 38. And yep. it's kind of like, I'm sorry, but that's why I love it because we've bypassed all that stuff that will go on for yep. seasons. I mean, how yep. long did Lois and Clark run for? Three years seasons? before they got married. Three years. Yep. They got married in oh, the, first season, the end of it. That was three years too many. Yeah. Um, and actually, <laughs> um, well, and, and I do, I do have a question for um, anybody here read the series uh, Astro City by Kurt Busiek. A long, no. long no. time ago in the galaxy far away. Okay. <laughs> there was a story. There was a story a while back um, which actually had a Superman and Lois analog. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was a it was a hero named uh, I think it was named Atomicus. Okay. And I'm, I'm, you know yeah. he was yeah and he you know he had you know just like Superman you know he had this on off you know reporter girlfriend mm-hmm. and she just like. It, again it it played with the it played with the trope because she tries to do you know what Lois does who I'm going to prove that you know Clark yeah. and Superman are the same you know she goes through all these things and he one ups her and then it comes to a head where he basically loses he loses it like he loses right. his temper and he's just like you know and then she realizes that you know he wasn't trying to deceive her he wasn't trying to lie to her on purpose you know and he did have a connection with her but her obsessiveness just ruined it and like he eventually left he he decided he would leave the planet you know he he was like okay i'm done and you know it just and it's like yeah it was it was an interesting story about how you know, something like this, this, you know, will they or won't they, or, oh, when will yeah. she find out? It's, it just kind of, it shows how there could be a dark side to this. Like, you mm-hmm. know, it, it, could, it could just get too much. Yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, final thoughts from everybody, final ideas. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Vicky. Vicky? Oh, let's go way back. Let's go to Robin Hood and Maid Marian. Yay! Uh... Always one of the favorites. Oh yeah, yeah. That's especially the Disney, the the Disney Robin. Oh, Marian. I love the Disney and oh. the Errol Flynn version. Errol Flynn, oh, yeah. Errol Flynn. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. my god, that was one of the first movies I saw as a kid, and I just was like, okay. <laughs> any of you? Any of you watch Robin of Sherwood? Yes, I've seen yes. a few episodes. Okay. Yeah. They, they were perfect together, Robin yes. and Marion. Wait, which one? And then and when it was Michael Prade, and then when Jason Connery came out as uh, the the new Richard of Huntington, I think it was Richard. Robert yeah, of, I think it was Richard, Richard of Huntington. Robert, yeah. Richard of Huntington. No, I think it was Richard. Yeah, Richard. Of Richard Huntington. of Huntington. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But of Huntington, she was still mourning over Robin, and then it took time, but she finally started like him i don't think there was any romance completely with them i think she was still always devoted to robin but it was you know i thought robin and marion were a great couple there yeah 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 um how about robin uh hood prince of thieves um they, they all 
Mm-hmm. I, I like the movie on some levels, mm-hmm. but um, yeah. Okay. I don't know. All right. But thank you for Robin and Marion. <laughs> yep, there you go. Ed, Ed, you have any final uh, ideas? Oh, geez. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of everybody that, uh, trying to think of everybody that we've gone through. Uh, oh geez um you know what okay i'm gonna i'm gonna do a hot take okay uh i'm gonna do a little bit of a hot take uh i know fellow one of the arguments among joe fans is scarlet and snake eyes or duke and snake eyes and Mm. honestly um okay this is gonna be a hot take hot take hot take uh hot take I'm going to agree with my friend Diana Davis. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of maybe Duke and Scarlet getting together because I feel like it seems that nine, like it, it just feels like the only thing with Scarlet and Snake Eyes is tons of soap opera drama. And I'm just like, you know what, uh, girl, you can do better. You can do so much better. Get 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 away from that. You know he's he's getting all obsessed with ninja style stuff. So go 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 find somebody else. Yeah, I'm just I'm not. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. I, I ain't I feeling it. One. I have one sign. Design. Okay. What's okay. what's your romance uh, um, couple? Thing? Okay, it's not really a romance, but like it's okay. a couple. Couple thing. Um, it it was Gendo I- Ikari and his wife Yui from Evangelion. Uh, and like I and like I only said yeah, that because. Yeah. He loved her so much that he hated his son because he took the attention from him and only and sent him away and then brought him back only to try and bring back his dead wife or at least yeah. bring all humanity together and yeah. be wow, with his yeah. wife. Yep. Yeah, that, that would not be a romance. Yeah. But, that's love. yeah. but I mean, it was romantic because he wanted his wife. Well, but yeah, uh, yeah but just, just a little. You know, it's icky. I, 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 yeah, I, I think it's just well, isn't isn't uh yeah, I think it's just yeah, it's like okay, I get it, I get it, you miss your wife, but dude, yeah. Yeah, that's not, back nice. Here. yeah. that's not nice. Okay, finally, my pop culture uh, romance, and I'm a Mark Who 42. We have to go with Doctor Who. We have the girl who waited in the Centaurian, uh Amy and Rory Ponder Williams. Oh, and we have oh, yeah. and even though I hate Clara, Clara and Danny Pink. Those are my two couples oh. yeah, that was you know what that one that last one that was way so much wasted potential yeah and it po's me because it's like there could have just been so much done with it and it wasn't done Ugh. dang it yeah dang it dang I, it dang it yeah I, I mean i of the two i thought amy and rory was the better romance and in the end they were together maybe in the 1930s you know we be yeah. angels sent them back but you know at least they were together claire and danny pink i i only saw humor in i didn't see them actually as a couple i just thought their bickering was funny and it was kind of like stephen moffat was writing his one of his comedies called coupling oh love that they show. bicker they bickered like the yes, characters on coupling did. oh my god Other than, you so he was, yeah that's how i saw it that stephen moffat was to putting that in and i kind of enjoyed that but i never saw them as a real couple well and i think I it's just, just again it was... wasted potential yeah like there could have been so much potential in that like i keep thinking about episodes of that series mm-hmm. but imagine if danny pink had been involved you could have gotten right. some more stuff out of it but instead it's like bring them yeah, on the it, was just, it was just like yeah it was just uh it was just for the it was just for the doctor to keep saying, "Oh, I don't like the military." Yeah, yeah. or you know, or, or calling you know, or calling uh, calling Danny Mister PE or yeah. whatever. Uh, and you know, I I hate to say these things because it was Capaldi's era, but you know, because I love Peter Capaldi yeah. uh, as doctor, yeah. and it's a shame. All right, does anyone have any final words? Obviously not, because it was no answer. Okay, nope. you've been listening. Well, you, know, you go ahead, Ed. I thought I thought that was our final words. I thought it I was. Well, I was about giving it. everyone. No, I was giving everyone to say Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, we'll see you next time. You know, nice little words to say. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Well, this is Mark Baumgart, and I've been joined by Eduardo M. Fryer, Vicky Jakubowski, and Zion Kiris. You've been listening to the Mark Who 42's Universe podcast here on the GeekCast Radio Network, our website, markwho42.com. Always visit that, please. And uh, all around the interweb thingy, like Spreaker, like uh, Apple, Pl- Apple Play, like uh, Google Play, like Audible. We're on Audible, folks. If you get your Amazon stuff, listen to us there. Until next time, so long. Jeff Bezos is our god. Yeah. Oh, worship the Bezos. He's taking me to space next time. I just thought I'd add that. Until next time, bye, everyone. Yeah, just be careful he's not trying to create the board. Oh. Thanks for listening to Mark Who42's Universe with hosts Mark Baumgarten, Eduardo M. Fryer, Zion Kiros, and Vicky Jakubowski. This program was produced and directed by Mark Baumgart. If you'd like to get in touch with us, please go to our Facebook page or email us at markboo42s.universe at gmail.com. You can listen to old shows at our website, markboo42.com, or even our YouTube page, markboo42. Marku 42's Universe, copyright 2022.